it's Cliff here. I'm uh, fitting a rapid turn um, to my 1100. I'm fitting a gang tooling platform and I'll do a bit of a clip or a series of clips on that. Um, for those of you who are following the probe, the uh, ITTP impact tolerant touch probe, um, don't worry I haven't forgotten you. I'm doing some side by side comparison tests just to make sure I've got the absolute best combination of materials and uh, design details. I've got some exotic material coming in from overseas that I also want to do some side-by-side -side testing. I don't want to release these even to the beta testers until I'm 100% sure that, that they're, they're as good as they can possibly be long-term. Uh, I want, want them to have a really good reputation right from the start. Thanks. So I'll get on with the video now on um, fitting the gang tooling platform uh, to the 1100. I love the process of design. I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with it as well. It's, um, you can't rush it. You really need to come up with all the different potential uh, arrangements and um, research them and, and study the sort of relative merits of the different designs and um, research all the relative merits and gradually you get a deeper and deeper understanding of of what the requirements are and what the limitations are and the process is a fascinating iterative process that um, I really enjoy um, and hopefully at the end of it if you're thorough enough you end up with a really good design that um, is uh, going to uh, tick all the boxes that you need it's simplicity of construction and rigidity and versatility and so on um, but you can't rush the process that's for sure okay let's measure the rotary motion when locked um, so the allowable error is six hundredths of a millimeter on the engagement keyholes. Wow, that's a lot of allowable error. But um, the actual error they're claiming is six microns. So let's see what we measure. Um, so I'll just engage the uh, key just by its own spring pressure. I won't try and jam it in because it's probably a taper fit. And we we'll put the dial indicator on there. Um, I zoomed in enough. Okay, I'm trying to see without getting in the way of the camera. So we'll spring it in the one direction and let it go. Uh, spring it in the other direction and let it go. I'm getting about five or six microns. You don't really count spring, you just count um, the actual movement after spring. So yeah, five or six microns, which is what they claim. So, you know, it does sound genuine. They, they sound to, seem to be genuine. The genuine certificate of inspection, um, apart from that one error I found um, just before. Um, so, my confidence rises again. It's, it's a well-made unit. Of course, the key, the sliding key, um, is only in the aluminium housing. So, as far as I can see, that's just a reamed hole in the aluminium housing in here. So that won't stand up to abuse and it will wear if it's uh, subject to um, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of movement, a, a lot of usage. But um, at least when it's new, it's very accurate and well made. The uh, bottom surface of the 1100 head is machined um, and I've run a dial indicator in both directions and it's it's level with the machine so that's really handy a big solid machined surface so I've ground the end off a file oh just let me zoom in on that so I've ground the end off a file square it makes a really good scraper and then you can get in there you can take the paint off and any birds and you can just see that's a nice machine surface now we're ready to bolt the uh, gang tooling platform to
So when I realized that that uh, face under the head was machined level, um, and we know that the uh, spindle cartridge uh, end boss is screwed on and that that surface will almost certainly be level, um, I thought, well, all I need to do is remove, say, two screws there. They're M8 cap screws. Um, I can bolt onto that face and uh, bolt on underneath there and just have a packer to make up the difference so that the uh, tooling platform is uh, level and parallel with the X, Y axes. Well, I know that tool marks are not really designed for flood cooling. I've got quite a big pump here. Shunting out a lot of fluid, but it's really needed for deep slot cutting like that. So I've got a, um, a cover over the uh, control cabinet, keep spray off it. And um, so far it's been working out really well. So I'll let this go down most of the way through and then uh, flip it over and cut it down from the top so when the slug comes loose it'll tend to tip away from the cutter. He says with fingers crossed. And it is a very quick way to do it and it's only an old cutter anyway should I have a crunch up. Actually I haven't ever had that happen but you never want to get too confident in this game. And there we are breakthrough on the other side you can see the advantage of having a cover over the controls, electrical controls has really been spraying everywhere. But part of the trick of this deep slot milling is to have a high coolant flow because you don't want the cutter re-eating its own chips. It soon breaks down if you, if you allow it to do that. Okay, this could be an um, entry into America's funniest home videos. <laughs> right, I wish I had three hands. Mickey Mouse but I've only got this $20 drill that fits in there so anyway it worked I think it's going to be really accurate and extremely rigid um, you can see that that flange on the uh, spindle nose is uh, exactly level with the machine so that's going to give you more than enough accuracy there. So I think that will bolt on there. It's conveniently two holes, one in the middle of that plate and one in the middle of that one, for mounting the quick change tool post. Or I could put a sub plate on there which would allow me to drop it down to different depths and give more flexibility for gang tooling. So now I've just got to stop and mull it for a while and think about the design of the gang plates, how they fit, um, whether they go, uh, I think we're probably going to go there and then maybe another one underneath it because we can go in uh, two dimensions there vertically and horizontally um, and then perhaps another one mounted over here so a drop plate, sub plate would probably be a good plan but I'm getting a bit ahead of my uh, design so let's <laughs> slow down a wee bit now I like this style of quick change tool holder. It's uh, common in New Zealand and um, I've been using it for many years. It has really good repeatability. Um, and I don't know about the Tormac style, but I know from similar types available here in New Zealand that they don't have such 
the dovetail type doesn't have such good repeatability. It's what I've got on my uh, small manual lathe and um, so I can capitalize on all of the tool holders that I've got for it um, and if I set it up right they'll all be on the same center height so that should be a real advantage. I'm not sure how important it is that the gang tooling plate is perfectly level but um, in case it is, at some stage in the future um, I'll try and get it right. So that's, that's really level there and I've got a 0.2 feeler gauge under there so that means I need to grind 0.2 or machine 0.2 off the packer block, that's 8th thou. Um, then I'll know it'll be perfectly, that the step packer difference will be perfectly in line. Yeah, I think a subplate's the way to go because I can put the uh, quick change tool post on the conventional side here. Um, but if I want to use gang tooling on the front, I can mount it on the back of that subplate. And if it's on the back of the subplate, then I get space to the front where I can mount my gang tooling on that uh, block on that subplate. And then when the uh, head's down, you can see I've got clearance there off the bottom of the gang tooling block to clear the, the works when it's going in and clear above it there. So it'd be a spacing of something like that if I'm doing chuck work. Could have closer spacing for um, if I see collet work. So that looks like the way to arrange the front and then these uh, gang tooling blocks can be mounted in the back as I indicated before. Something like that, but I better stop this now and get on with my contract work before the client starts screaming at me. And it's also a chance for me to stop and mull it over. Really got to think of all the different alternatives. Well that was a bunch of fun. Um, I better get on with other things for a while now and mull over the final stage. Um, I'll do another video in a few days time, or it could be a week or two. So uh, thanks for watching. Cheers.